OK, so for this problem, what it's asking us to do is it says h of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 1. So it wants, to write as, it, it wants us to write this down as linear factors. Now, by using the linear factorization theorem, we talked about that. When we look at our degree is 2, how, what is the most number of linear factors we can possibly have? 2, right? We're going to have two linear factors that, are going, that can be complex numbers. They can either be too real or too um, imaginary, correct? But there's going to be two factors. So what I want to do, first of all, we, know we talked about using like the rational zero test. That's going to tell you all the rational zeros. So the only possible rational zeros for this would be what? Plus or minus 1, right? That's the only, that's the only possible rational zeros. But they don't have to be rationals. They could be irrational numbers as well. Um, and they could also be imaginary. So to find them, we have a quadratic type. So to find them, what method did you guys want to use? So we, well, what we could do is we could always use 1 and negative 1, use synthetic division, and see if those are zeros. However, I can also look at this and say, can I factor it? Can you factor this polynomial? Well, what two numbers multiply to give you 4, add to give you negative 4? Um, none, right? It's only 1 times 1 gives you 1, or negative 1 times negative 1. But neither of those add to give you negative 4, right? So when you have something that's non-factorable, what else could you do? Maybe quadratic formula, quadratic formula, formula, yeah. right? The formula, quadratic formula. Opposite of b, plus or minus, square root, b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. What does that equal? That equals what? A lot of people don't remember this. That equals your zeros. x equals those. Those are your zeros. So your, whatever this answer is, x equals that. That's going to be your zeros. So let's do this. So we have opposite of 4, which is going to be 4, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 1, all divided by 2 times 1. Right? So there, negative 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 4 is going to be 12. So I have x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 12 divided by 2. Well, I can simplify the square root of 12 as 2 square root of 3, right? Uh, I'm going to pass back your guys' quiz. We're a little, we're a little rough on our uh, simplifying radicals, right? I can break that down 12. I can break that down into 4 times square root of 3. Square root of 4 is 2 radical 3, right? Okay. So I can write that as x equals 4 plus or minus 2 radical 3 all over 2. Divide that through. And I could say my zeros are x equals um, 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, if this is my zeros, right? how do we go from zeros to factors? Well, remember, the zeros of a formula, if I say x equals a is a 0, then what is the factored form of that? x minus a is a factor. So if a is a 0, x equals a is a 0, then x minus a is a factor. So to write these as your factors, right? because that's what it says to do, write it as a linear factors, it's going to be x minus 2 plus square root of 3 times x minus 2 minus square root of 3. So that was going to be your factored form. Nope, it's not asking you to find. Well, I mean, you don't need to. I mean, these are your zeros. So you don't need to find the zeros. It's just telling you to write as a pair of linear factors. So that's it. That's your factored form. Any questions on that? Yes? This is just a, this was just part of your notes when I said when x equals a, when a, when a is a 0. Right? Because remember, x, whatever the value of x, that's going to be your, your intercept. So when a is a 0, we put it as a form x equals a, right? when we solve x equals a. Then I'm just saying x minus a is a factor of your polynomial. OK. So whenever you have something, whenever we solve for it and we get, oh, x equals a, then we know that's going to be your factor. Yes? What are other ways you can solve You could complete the square, right? Huh? Well, you can't factor it because remember if you try to remember if you try to break this down into two factors, 
you got to find what two numbers multiply to give you one to add to give you negative four, which is we don't have that, right? So you can't factor it, but you can complete the square would solve it as well. So we could have done that as well. That would have given you the exact same answer. Okay. But graphing it, see how graphing would be difficult? Because how are you going to know it's the square root of 3, right? That's an irrational number. That's going to be difficult just to say, oh, the graph, you know, a lot of you just want to use technology. Well, that's, if you graph it and you just give me a decimal, that's not going to be correct because you're going to use an approximation, which I do not want you to use. Okay? Good?